Live Well, Macular Degeneration Research Update by Geraldine Hode of the Macular Society, recorded on the 31st of March 2022. About Live Well. Live Well is a series of events aimed at helping people make the most of life with sight loss. Live Well is a collaborative project between six local independent sight societies. Sight Advice South Lakes, Humbria, My Sight's Not, Nottingham, Sight Airedale in the Airedale area of North and West Yorkshire, Support for Sight in Mid and West Essex, Sutton Vision in the London Borough of Sutton, and Outlookers in Huddersfield in West Yorkshire. Good morning, everybody. Morning. This is um, I'm Tim, I advise South Lakes. We represent, um, we call ourselves a rainbow group. Mm-hmm. We won a trophy called the Rainbow Trophy. And we're, and we're seven site organizations from around the country. And we've been doing Zooms um, that have been quite successful. And we get really, really good people to talk. And today's no exception. We have Geraldine Hode from the Macula Society. And people love to hear about research. So Geraldine is going to tell us about a the Macula Society and current research that she's heard about. And um, over to you, Geraldine. Good morning, everybody. Lovely to be here with you. Um, yeah, I'm I'm the research manager at the Macula Society. Um, in case any of you aren't very familiar with Macula Society, we we provide support for people with macular disease as well as funding research. It's sort of 50-50 with the two two things. Um, so we we fund medical research. We spend about a million and a half pounds a year on on medical research projects in the UK, um, aiming to find a cure for, for macular disease. And I look after that research program as well as a few other things. So I'm going to talk today mainly about age-related macular degeneration. Um, I'm assuming all or most of you have AMD. Would that be right? Mm-hmm. Nod or is there anybody who doesn't have AMD? That's probably a better question. Yeah. Uh, I don't have AMD yet. Sorry. Stargarts. Stargarts. Okay, I can I can touch on Stargarts as well. Okay, that's good. I'd just like to know my audience, so to speak. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is so mainly is, is AMD. Um, I'm going to talk about new treatments for wet AMD, new drug treatments that are coming through. Um, then I'm going to talk about our hopes for new treatment, for a treatment for dry AMD, because there's no treatments at the moment. And then I'm going to talk about stem cell treatments, which could be um, applicable to, to any macular disease um, and gene therapy treatments similar for, for those that could be used for any macular disease. Um, I'm happy to stop after each of those sections and take questions. Um, you can just pause and, and, and you can take uh, discuss um, anything you want. Um, I, I'm happy to take questions at the end as well. So um, I will pause after each of those sections just to let you have a think about and if you've got any questions on those. hope that sounds all right. Um, so the first section is then new drugs for wet AMD. So if any of you have wet AMD, um, it requires very regular trips to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And um, some people have I've met people who had eight or 100 injections in their eyes to treat their wet AMD. Um, so the treatments we have at the moment have to be given very regularly when they're an injection into the eye. Um, it's, it's a the treatment burden for patients is significant and the, and the cost to the NHS and ophthalmology is incredible. So what the pharmaceutical companies have been trying to do is develop new ways of delivering injections into the, um, drugs into the eye and um, trying to develop longer acting treatments as well. So we have three drugs available at the moment um, that are used. Um, they're called Lucentis, Ilea and Beoview. And they tend to be given at sort of four weeks, six week, eight week, 12 week intervals. So this new drug for Risimab, it could potentially be given every 16 weeks. Um, so we are gradually having drugs come onto the market that um, give people longer between injections. Um, it's a dual action drug. Um, those of you who have AMD may have heard the, the, the class of drugs that we use to treat wet AMD are called anti-VEGF drugs. Um, this contains an anti-VEGF drug, but also an, a drug um, has a second component which treats another four 
another aspect of wet AMD. So that's why we think it, it's a longer acting. It's got dual action and it can um, control the disease for longer. We need fewer injections. So that tr drug um, we hope will be available probably next year for wet AMD. It's, it's going through the approval processes at the moment. Um, to try and get away from so many injections and other in and just injections full stop, um, they is, there is something which has got uh, approval in America, but and we hope we'll get approval here soon, is something called the Port Delivery System, or its brand name, as it's now called, is Susvimo. And this is a little implant that would be um, inserted into to the surface of the eye. Um, it would sit under your eyelid. You wouldn't see it or feel it. Um, and this would be a little sort of grain of rice size um, implant, which would contain um, the drug Lucentis. Um, it would act as a little reservoir of Lucentis, and that Lucentis would gradually release into the eye, and the reservoir could be topped up. So as well as not needing um, regular injections, once you had the implant put in, the Lucentis would gradually release into the eye, um, and that Lucentis reservoir could be topped up every six months or maybe even every nine months. So again, moving away from, from the very, very regular injections um, that people have at the moment. Um, what everybody would love to be able to have for wet AMD is eye drops um, instead of our injections. We are a little bit of a way from that, unfortunately, but people are working on it. A um, bit of a holy grail, really. Um, the problem with eye drops is that you have to get enough drug to the back of the eye, to the retina. Um, and the eye is very well designed to keep things out <laughs> rather than let things in. Um, so it's, it's, it's a technological problem, really, of, of getting enough drug to the back of the eye. But I think they'll solve it eventually. But that's not very, very close. Um, so that's there are other drugs coming on the market quite soon um, for AMD. You may have heard how expensive the current drugs are. For AMD, they're hundreds of pounds just for the, for the drug itself, let alone you know, the staff and the cost of appointments. So um, the drugs that we have at the moment are coming off patent, and therefore that means that other companies can come in and make them as well and, and make them cheaper. And these um, copycat drugs, as you might call them, um, are technically called biosimilar drugs. Um, and we are starting to see those come through, and in a few years' time, we will have a number of biosimilar drugs um, which are copycat drugs for the ones we have at the moment, and they should be significantly cheaper, um, which is great for, for everybody in the NHS. So they will operate, they will be just as safe and just as efficient um, as the current drugs, but they're just copycats, really. It's like um, buying paracetamol or, or, um, or no better one is buying Nurofen versus buying ibuprofen. You can get quite cheap ibuprofen, but the Nurofen branded version but, um, is much more expensive. So does anybody have any queries about wet AMD treatment? Sorry, you asked right at the beginning, does anyone not have uh, uh, macular degeneration? I have a condition mm -hmm. called PXC. Oh, yes. behaves the same way, that mm -hmm. uh, I can weep blood into the back of the eye. Would these drugs you're talking about do any good for me? Um, certainly these drugs, um, which address the new blood vessels that grow in the macula, um, with wet AMD, that phenomenon of the new blood vessels growing and leaking fluid happens in quite a few other eye conditions as well. So if there is the sort of technical term is choroidal neovascularization, choroid being blood vessels, neo, new vascularization, new blood vessels. Um, so you get that new blood vessel growth in other, in other diseases. Um, and if that happens with PXE, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure if it can happen with PS, PXE, then that could be treated with, with these anti-VEGF drugs. Hi. <coughs> Hi, it's George in Kendall. Can I ask you, are there any potential treatments that would reverse the effects of the disease rather than just stopping it getting it, it getting worse? Oh, that would, that would be great, wouldn't it? Um, yes. <laughs> we're not quite there yet. <laughs> the closest we are to that um, is stem cell treatments, which I'm going to uh -huh. come to later, if you can... I can. I can I'll get to that one. Get to that one later and fully explain it later if that's okay. Okay, thank you. So, dry AMD is the other type of age-related macular degeneration. Um, dry and wet—they're just two forms of the same disease. Um, you can have 
just have dry AMD or you can have wet and dry in the same eye or wet in one eye and dry in the other. It's, 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 they're just different aspects of the same disease. But most people who have AMD, 90% have, have the dry form um, for which we don't have a treatment at the moment. Um, and for the, for the person who's, who's got Stargardt, there are quite similarities between dry AMD and Stargardt's disease. And one of the drugs that they're developing um, and trialing for dry AMD, they're also dry, trialing for Stargardt disease. And that, that drug is called Zimura. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, so with dry AMD and, and with AMD in general, it, it's a complex disease. Um, there's still a lot we don't know about what causes um, and the progress of, of AMD. Um, so there's still a lot of research going on into, into the, to the actual disease, let alone um, potential tre new treatments. Um, but one of the things we do know is that um, genetics is a big factor in AMD and environment and lifestyle all, uh, and ageing um, all come into whether you're, what your risk is of developing AMD. Um, and we know, another thing we know is, is the importance of um, the immune system in AMD. We know that a key driver of, of, of the degeneration that happens in the macula that leads to the sight loss is overaction, overactivity in the immune system. Um, and the overactivity in the immune system leads to inflammation in the cells of the eyes, and that leads to damage. And then the damaged cells die, and then that, that's when people start to experience sight loss. So this inflammation, we know, it is key to the damage that leads to the sight loss. So when they're looking at potential treatments for dry AMD, there's a lot of focus on reducing that inflammation, reducing the inflammation, reducing the damage, reducing the sight loss. So some of the drugs that we think will be available in, in a year or two um, are coming to the end of their clinical trials. They're, they're looking promising. Um, are drugs that are addressing that inflammation in cells of the macula. So there's one called Pegsetacaplan, which is a terrible thing to pronounce. <laughs> I'm just getting, just getting the hang of it. Um, from a company called Apelis, and that other one I mentioned, Zimura. Um, they're both drugs which are in phase three clinical trials, which is the last phase um, before the company seeks a license to, to, to market the drug. Um, and in both of those cases, they are addressing the inflammation and they are injections into the eye. So we haven't escaped that, unfortunately. Um, and they are showing promise in terms of that they're slowing the progress of the disease. Unfortunately, they're not effective enough in, in their current form um, to stop the disease in its tracks, but they are showing that they're able to slow the progress of the disease. And in that way, we'd hope to preserve vision for longer. So we are looking forward to those reaching the end of their clinical trials and then the companies, if their results are good enough, will, will seek a, a license. So we are looking at you know, potentially having a, the first proper treatment for um, dry AMD in, in a year or two, which is, which is exciting. Not sure how the NHS is going to cope, but it's exciting. Um, so other ways that they're looking at tackling dry AMD is um, trying to keep the photoreceptors alive for longer. So the photoreceptors are those cells in the retina that um, detect the light coming into the eye. Then they're, they're essentially nerve cells. Um, they detect the light coming into the eye. They turn it into a nerve signal, which goes down the optic nerve to the brain, because the brain, brain takes those signals and, and creates a vision as we experience it. Um, so those photoreceptors are key. And when the photoreceptors die because of the degeneration of the cells of the macula, that is when people experience sight loss. So if we can keep those photoreceptors alive for longer, we can keep vision for longer. So there's various neuroprotective, as they call it, drugs that, that are looking at um, that hope to keep those eye cells going for longer. Um, in other there are, to be honest, they're looking at all sorts of different ways of um, trying to address the AMD. As I said, it's a complex disease. They're not exactly sure what is the sort of key thing and there may not be one key thing that that could stop the disease in its tracks we may need to address lots of different aspects of the, the what's going on at the back of the eye to really be able to treat the disease um, in an ideal world uh, we'd have a treatment for people in the very early stages of amd we tend to talk about amd having early intermediate and late stages 
early AMD, um, you've still got your site, but they may the optician may pick up the fact you've got um, some changes in, in your retina and they may tell people that I've got signs of early AMD, but there'll be no effect on, on the eyesight at that stage. Then as the disease progresses, you go to intermediate AMD and you see more changes. Um, and then at late stage AMD, that's when people start to experience last sight loss. And when we, and one form of late stage AMD is, is wet AMD. So what we would love and what everybody would be aiming for is to have a treatment that could be given to people in the, in, probably in the intermediate stage of AMD because not everybody with early AMD progresses to sight loss. So people with intermediate AMD who are at risk of sight loss could hopefully be given a treatment one day that would stop the, the disease or very you know, slow it significantly so that they never have to have, never have to have experience of sight loss. Any queries on that aspect of what I was chatting about? Geraldine, Hi. Um, can you tell me, my specialist put me on something called Macula Pro Advance. Right. Do you know anything about this? Not, I'm get, not, is it a nutritional supplement? I, I yeah, I'm yeah. sure it says food supplement. Right. Yeah. Now, I don't know whether it worked or not. It was very expensive um, because she asked, she sent a letter to my doctor, but my doctor wouldn't give it, wouldn't prescribe it for me. She said, no, no, it's not on our list. No. Um, and to be fair, um, our daughter got it on Amazon for us, and it was about a third of what they wanted to do the chemist. But do you think it has any benefit? Um, well, just just to explain to, to, to other people who may not be aware of these, um, there is some clinical trial evidence from something called the ARIDS trial, age-related eye disease study, um, big study that was done in America. Um, they looked at what nutritional supplements might have an impact on development of AMD. Um, and the trial showed that this, what they call the ARIDS formula, which contains, and I always need to check this, vitamin C, vitamin E, copper, zinc, and then two pigments called lutein and zeaxanthin. So this, this formula um, of these different things called the ARIDS formula does have some evidence that it can slow the progress of AMD for some people. Depends on your stage of your disease and your circumstances. Um, the trouble is that the evidence isn't regarded as very high quality. Um, it certainly isn't regarded as high quality enough for these supplements to be given on prescription. Some people used to be able to get them on prescription if they were lucky, but a couple of years ago, the NHS sort of dictated that they shouldn't be given on prescription. Um, hence, hence your problem. And there's a number of brands on the market. Um, the one of i would not heard of that one that you've got, but Macu Shield, Macu Gold, those other ones, um, there's quite a few. Um, so a lot of people do take them. Certainly, as long as they don't interfere with any medications you're on for other things, then they're quite safe. And, and But they're no, you can't, they might help. It's difficult to know whether they will or not, because if they are helping, they're just slowing the progress of the disease. And everybody's experience of the disease is different some people it progresses slowly very slowly and some people it's much faster certainly if you have wet amd it's a much faster progress so we know a lot of people take them we certainly wouldn't discourage people from taking them but the evidence that they work is not um enough to convince a lot of people shall we say it's quite controversial Thank some you, pharmacologists and opticians will recommend them others will say don't bother Thank and, you. We, and we know they're expensive as you say this is where I'm going to talk about, about stem cell treatments, um, which, as I said before, are the treatments that could potentially um, restore vision one day. Um, but are mainly at the moment, they're looking at um, stopping the disease progressing. So stem cells <clears throat> are a form of cell which we all start off with a little ball of cells. When the egg and the sperm come together, they grow into what eventually will become the fetus they start but they start off as a little ball of stem cells and stem cells are unique in that they can turn into any other type of cell so that little ball of cells that we will start off with one cell will become an eye cell a kidney cell a bone cell a muscle cell that, that's how we all start um, <clears throat> but there are also stem cells in our adult bodies um, constantly making blood cells constantly making skin cells for instance um, so this is where the scientists get the stem cells from and these days um, 
they often take stem cells from, from skin, adult skin. And what they can do in the laboratory is they can take these stem cells and they can turn them into eye cells. In particular, they turn them into the, a layer of the cells and the retina called the retinal pigment epithelial cells, which is a single layer of cells within the retina, which, which are crucial for the proper operation of the, set of the, of the retina. So the way this treatment works is that um, in AMD and in lots of macular diseases, um, the sight loss is, is due to the cells, cells of the retina dying off, and in particular, the cells of the retinal pigment epithelium cells dying off. And what they can do is that they can grow these new cells, new RPE cells in the laboratory, and then they can be um, transplanted into the macula to replace the ones that have died. So this is being in, in trials at the moment, this form of treatment, um, both in the UK and, and in America. Um, in the UK, there's um, the Moorfields Eye Hospital um, and University College London, where there was some, a trial, and that was used to treat some people who had severe vision loss due to wet AMD. Um, they were treated in 2015 with a little patch of new cells, and, and they were, a lot of their vision was able to be restored. Um, they'd only very recently lost the vision. So although their RPE cells might have died, their photoreceptors were still alive. <clears throat> Hence, when they put in the new RPE cells, they were able to regain some, vi regain some vision and, and they were able to read again. Um, not perfect vision, but much, much better than they had before. So that trial is, is still going, still treating patients. There was a little bit of a hiatus due to funding problems, but that work is still going on, <clears throat> excuse me, at Moorfields Eye Hospital. Um, in America, there's a couple of trials underway, um, same type of treatment, injecting new cells into the, into the macula. Um, and that's showing really, really good promise. In this case, they're treating people with dry AMD. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just going to have a coffee. So they're treating these people with, with dry AMD and injecting these new cells. Um, and as well as it's showing in, um, in, in many of the patients that the that the, um, treat, the disease is, is stopped progressing due to these new cells. In some people, they have actually seen some restoration of vision. Um, and I'll, I'll explain how this, this um, happens. In, they, think, they think this is, which is a big surprise to them, I have to say. And they're very pleased about it. And they think um, in dry AMD, you have an area of cell death, which they call technically called geographic atrophy. So atrophy, things dying off. Geographic, because it's, it's a patch of cell death. And these patches of cell death in dry AMD um, start small, and there can be a number of them, small little patches of cell death, but they gradually get larger. Um, and towards the end stage of the disease, they will become one large patch, which will cover the, the whole of the macula. Um, so... What they think has been in the case when they've added these new cells in um, and they've looked to see how this, um, how it's affected this, these areas of geographic atrophy. Um, where they've seen people getting their vision back is because of this ever, this little, these patches of atrophy, they, they grow larger. Um, they have a kind of, what you call a leading edge around the side, yeah, the edges of the circle. And that's where the cells, they think, are, are not dead, but they're, they're, they're sick. They're, not, they're unhappy. And, and um, this injection of these new cells um, rejuvenates them. So people are seeing a little bit of improvement in vision because those cells around the edge of the, this growing area of cell death have, have not died yet and, and have come back to life due to the new cells that have been implanted. So that's, that's all very exciting. And those um, trials are, are still in the relatively early stages, but are showing a lot of promise in America. Um, stem cell treatments, otherwise, you know, they are still a relatively new form of treatment. Um, and um, we, won't, we will have to wait a few years before they're an option, I think. But looking really promising at the moment. Hopeful. Any queries about stem cell therapy? Usually people want to know how can they get on the trial. <laughs> Hello. Not that easy, unfortunately. Um, can, I ask a, um, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, right. Uh, my name is Pierre. I'm uh, calling from, or I'm, I'm listening from South London. And 
Um, it's, I don't really have AMD or anything, but it's about stem cells, really. It's probably a bit out of the, the um, exact field here, but um, I lost my sight about five years ago due to a pituitary adenoma. So what? I lost my sight from within. Mm. So it was my optic nerves. And um, my mum has, you know, she's always looking online and trying to, she, she's a, you know, she, she, she goes with what she sees online. So it's obviously stem cells. Right. <laughs> so she, she was telling me a while ago about, and um, she showed me this uh, place in Berlin, which um, advertises stem cell treatment for various things. I haven't, I haven't gone as far as sending them my medical records or anything yet. Um, but because I've been completely without sight for five years and my problems all stemmed from, which is hopefully now removed, a pituitary adenoma, but, you know, I don't know if it's not exactly the field we're talking about today, but is it even worth looking at that kind of thing in terms of regaining my sight? I mean, uh, uh, it's a bit risky, I think, but I don't know. Well, <clears throat> there is a big word of caution around stem cell treatments. There, there are no proven safe and effective treatments on base of using stem cells in ophthalmology um, anywhere in the world. But there are a lot of private clinics who offer stem cell treatments, um, which are unproven and are potentially dangerous. Um, and they make promises that they really can't keep. So we are very wary of anybody finding a stem cell clinic anywhere in the world um, that makes big promises. They don't always tell the truth about the evidence that supports the efficacy of their treatments. Um, they will cost a lot of money and they play on people's hope of, of, of regaining vision yeah. or a cure for multiple sclerosis, anything like that. Um, there are some real flags, I suppose, if you're looking at these things, is you know, if they profess that the, their treatments will cure you know, I've seen lists of 50 different things, everything from autism to multiple sclerosis to arthritis. They claim that these stem cell treatments will cure. That's a big red flag. <laughs> um, so we, we, we do tend to warn people off looking for stem cell clinics. I mean, there are clinics in the UK that sell these treatments, but they don't, as far as we're aware, sell, profess to treat ophthalmological conditions, eye conditions. So well, do I be definitely, I mean, <laughs> if I was going to continue, I would definitely show it to my um, neurosurgical uh, team first. <laughs> That's <laughs> absolutely the right. best thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Double but, check okay, it with your okay. NHS. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, I'll move on to gene therapies. So this is another form of new treatment that's coming through, but holds a great deal of promise. Um, it probably possibly holds most promise um, for treating diseases which are entirely genetic. Um, I mentioned that AMD has a genetic component, absolutely does, um, but we know that there's lots of genes involved in your risk of developing wet AMD, maybe 30 or so, um, and it's difficult, possibly impossible to correct all the faults in the genes when you're dealing with you know, 30 odd genes. Um, but you, if a, something like Stargardt's disease or the other macular dystrophies, best disease, or species, there's lots of them, um, are usually due to a fault in a single gene. And in those cases, it is potentially possible to treat those diseases um, by in some way correcting the mutation. Um, this is sometimes called gene editing. Um, and there's different forms of, of, of gene therapy that, that could potentially address um, the fault in, in, a, in a single gene. Um, and they are being investigated for macular dystrophies like Stargardt's. So we have um, research projects that we fund that are looking into gene therapies for macular dystrophies. Um, so with AMD, um, it's a different form of gene therapy, which, it, which is being investigated in clinical trials at the moment. Um, and I tend to talk about this in terms of it being creating a drug factory within the cells of the eye. Um, and what I mean by this is, is it's enabling the cells of the eye, instead of you needing an eye injection of Lucentis, Ilea or whatever, um, you enable the cells of the eye and the retina to make the drug themselves. 
which sounds a bit weird, I know, hence, hence the drug factory uh, reference. Um, so the way they do this is that um, they take a completely harmless virus, um, they take out the DNA of the virus and then insert the DNA that codes for the drug that you want the cells to be able to make. You sent it to Ilea, it's wet A and D. Um, you then inject lots of these viruses into the macula and the viruses insert that DNA that codes for the drug into the cells of the eye. Um, and then if it all works correctly, those cells are then able to use that, that code to make the drug themselves. Um, now we've got trials underway using this methodology um, for both wet and dry AMD. In America, they've um, tested it, on, they are testing it on people with wet AMD. You've had lots of injections for wet AMD. Um, and the trials are ongoing, but they're looking really promising. It could be potentially be a one-off injection to treat your wet AMD um, because the people they're treating in the trial um, are going you know, a year or so without needing any injections because the cells are making the anti-VEGF drugs themselves. Um, with dry AMD, we've got a trial underway with a company called Gyroscope Therapeutics in the UK at the moment um, using this form of treatment. And the drug that that's coding for is addressing that inflammation that I was talking about before. So people are being treated at the moment with a gene therapy for dry AMD, um, but it's still relatively early stages of those clinical trials. But um, we have close association with the company Gyroscope Therapeutics, and they are looking for people to volunteer for their clinical trials. If anybody has dry AMD and might be interested, I can provide some details. But um, it's, it's, most clinical trials um, tend to take place in America. Um, and we're quite lucky to have the gyroscope trials, as well as in other countries, taking place in the UK because it's a, the UK um, US company and they've got, they've got a base here. So um, it's really nice to be able to help with their recruitment for those trials. Uh, Jared, you know, gene uh, therapy. <clears throat> question just popped up by um, Frank. How do you oh, get yes. on the tray for this? Is the question <laughs> in the chat? Yeah. Um, if you're talking about the gene therapy tr trial and gyroscope therapeutics, um, <clears throat> probably the best thing for me to do, if, if that works for, for Tim, um, um, is to um, provide some details for a telephone number. Um, I mean, if you go online and, and look for gyroscope therapeutics, um, they have a website and you can um, apply to them to volunteer through the website. But we also have a telephone number that I can provide. Um, probably best, I don't really know how we can circulate that. Um, and then you can contact the company direct. What they, the first thing they want is, 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 is a saliva sample from people. They're looking, they want to look at the DNA in the cells in your saliva from the inside of your cheeks um, to find out which trial that they're running you might be suitable for. Um, so that will be the, one of the first things is giving a saliva sample then you may have to go to a, com a hospital to have lots of tests on your eyes. Maybe um, It's called the screening process. So they're looking to select people who are suitable for the trial. Um, so there is a process to go through for that. But um, they are looking for lots of thousands of people to screen, to find the people who are most suitable for the trials that they're underway. And they've got three or four trials underway at the moment. I hope that helps. But I'll provide the telephone number and the, the website address afterwards if that helps. I was going to yeah, Tim here again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As of, um, you've outlined all, all different types of research. Um, just, just finding a drug solution, it looks like that's, that's been a success over many years, really, hasn't it? You've been able to alleviate um, AMD, but not actually in, improve it. But gene mm -hmm. therapy and stem cell, is, especially gene therapy, is that the way that seems to be the way it can be? I wouldn't say reverse as such, but, mm. but it, does that seem to be the most successful potential? I'll say potential, Geraldine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely potential. A potential, yeah. potential way forward for the research. That does seem to be... Mm. Um, we've had J Jasleen, Dr. Jasleen Coron talk about gene therapy a few weeks ago in general, oh. and, mm. and um, that was quite positive in many ways. So is that possibly the most positive way forward? Because that's going to be very expensive, isn't it, to research? Um, well, hopefully with gene therapy, um, certainly the, with the ones for wet and dry AMD, hopefully it would just be a one-off injection. So maybe right. not that expensive. Um, I mean, we have the first ever gene therapy for ophthalmology. Um, 
that became available for a particular form of inherited retinal disease, um, which was the first ever gene therapy that the NHS provides. I mean, it is incredibly expensive, um, but there's, they, they've allowed it to be available on the NHS because there's not a massive number of people, you know, we're talking hundreds, not thousands of people who have who are available for that treatment in the UK. Um, so, you know, the cost does come into it with the NHS, absolutely. Um, but I, I think gene therapy is really promising um, as, a form, as a form of treatment for all diseases, not just eye diseases. And, you know, eye disease are, is leading the way, really, on gene therapy. You know, having an approved treatment for called Lux Turner, if anybody's interested, um, available already. Um, and lots of things work, you know, working towards new treatments in the future. I mean... They, they offer the promise if it's if it's one mutation you're trying to fix they offer the pure promise of a cure um, rather than you know an ongoing treatment so the drugs will always be an ongoing treatment but gene therapy offers the promise of a cure okay thank you Geraldine, can we just ask you, um, we work for a, a, a charity called Diabetes UK, and one of the um, things that often come up is um, diabetic um, retinal screening because I've got diabetes and they kept saying to me, oh, it must be your diabetes. But now they've decided probably it's not. But that is one of the problems, isn't it, that can happen with diabetes? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. I mean, there's a lot of um, issues with diabetes, which is why we have a diabetes eye screening program to pick up early signs of, of um, your diabetes affecting your retina. Um, and to catch it early and treat it, and we, we, you know, that we are world leaders, you know, in having a, that level of eye screening in the UK. So we're very fortunate to have it. But you know, people who have um, long-term diabetes, maybe they had type one and developed it when they were younger. So the longer you've had diabetes, um, the more risk of, of developing eye complications. Um, and it is something that, that is covered within our within our remit, diabetes. And we yeah, we we work with Diabetes UK on on research. So, yeah, it is a significant area for us as well. Di what you develop is diabetic macular edema, which is buildup of fluid within the macula, and that causes damage that can lead to sight loss. But it can be treated with the same drugs as a treat that a wet AMD is treated with. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you very much. Um, that was very informative and very helpful. Um, I have PXC. So the gentleman, I don't know if he's still on there, Yes. Um, I, 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 I'm diagnosed with PXC and have had it for a number of years. Oh, and, one of, and so they, they're not admitting that the, they're just about admitting now that the PXC could also be causing the dry macular degeneration. Right. But it's been a bit more rapid in the way it's responded. Um, it was only diagnosed in 2015. Although for years, I've known that ophthalmologists would be looking for um, various changes behind the eye. Mm. In fact, I used to say to them, this is what you're looking for. Is it there yet? Um, but um, they're, they're sort of, they're talking dry macular degeneration, but there's been, I've had to sort of say to various professors who I don't even know, I've taken a chance and contacted them at Moorfields, right. that um, no one's saying um, but are we talking about the PXC? Is it is it that, or is it the age related? Because mm. I'm only I'm only sixty four, um, but I've been short sighted for years. But, but what's interesting is that how how um, research is really moving on from when I was diagnosed with PXC years ago, mm. um, and this this kind of discussion is really very helpful yeah, yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much yeah i mean I, I, we talk to a lot of people who have um, you know they call it a sort of a diagnostic odyssey <laughs> sometimes it's called because <laughs> it takes that <laughs> to get a diagnosis and that's true very that's important true. patients are armed with the information about their disease so that they can you know not every ophthalmologist is a specialist in a rare disease like yeah that's true that's true so the more you know the more you can you know challenge yes. them but they're beginning. They're beginning to. It's it's actually being recognised now. They are beginning to accept that there probably is that. Mm. Um, so for the gentleman who's got PXE, 
um, I've got an idea of what you've been going through as well. So you're not on your own. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to say, but thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Thank Thank you. Live well and future vision. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. The Live Well events take place on the second Thursday of each month at 10 a.m. Future Vision sessions take place on the fourth Thursday of each month at 10 a.m. and are technology events aimed at people living with sight loss. To attend the next session or to suggest future topics, please contact your local sight society who will be able to provide you with the Zoom link.